Hi everybody, Neil Malik with Knack Training here bringing you another everyday office video. I'm going to use a couple of different charting techniques in this video, but when it comes right down to it, what we're doing here is making a dynamic chart by using radio buttons in Excel. As you can see here, the radio button next to region one is selected, and so region one is highlighted and the value of region one is put in. If I click on region two, you can see that the value is put on top of the bar and that bar turns dark black. If I click on region three, it highlights and it puts the label in. So let me demonstrate the several different techniques that I use to make this happen in the end. If we start off with the basics of we have regions and their values, we can of course create a bar chart out of this information. We can go to the insert tab at the top of the screen, go to the chart options over here in the middle of the insert ribbon and go with a 2D bar chart. Now, if I want the 2D bar chart to line up with the regions over on the left, you'll notice it goes region one, two, or excuse me, five, four, three, two, one in the chart, as opposed to one, two, three, four, five in the table. So I will need to click onto the regions themselves here in the chart and use the keyboard shortcut control one in order to format that set of information, the axis. And in the panel that opens up on the right hand side, I can click the checkbox here to put the categories in reverse order from the original axis. So now it goes one, two, three, four, five. And at this point I can take off all the extraneous information like the titles, uh, the scale, the region names, etc. and just sort of line this up more or less with the original table. And so this is our beginning point, but at this point we want to make it dynamic. We want to be able to highlight uh, different values based on the uh, radio buttons over here on the side, and we want to have a label that says 14.5K instead of $14,500.00. So for all of those components, we need to have the interaction of having radio buttons over here on the left. So what I'll do now is go to my developer tab at the top of the screen. If you don't have your developer tab at the top of the screen, just right click anywhere on the ribbon at the top of the screen and choose customize the ribbon. And in that dialog box, you'll see there is a checkbox here for the developer tab. Make sure the developer tab is turned on for your environment and then click OK, and now you'll have the availability to go to the Insert drop-down menu and look for this radio button right here under Form Controls. So I choose the radio button under Form Controls. You can see I've got a crosshairs here, and I'll just basically click and drag to make it the size of the cell. Now if I click into the text and I delete the Option button text, right there. It'll just give me the radio button itself and I can sort of squeeze and stretch it however I want, placing it right next to region number one. Now the default way that uh, radio buttons work in Microsoft Excel is that every radio button is mutually exclusive to every other radio button, meaning that you can't select any two radio buttons at the same time. And the first radio button, it's interesting, actually outputs a value of 1. So here all I have to do is use Control c and Control v to copy and paste the original radio button and place that one here next to region two, and then control V and put the set, uh, third one next to region three, and you know where I'm going with it from here. Paste, and paste. Now at this point, to make it a little bit cleaner, it's probably a good idea to right click on the first one, Hold down the control key on the keyboard, right click on the second one, right click on the third one, right click on the fourth one, and right click 
on the fifth one. As you can see now, I have all five of them selected appropriately. And I'm just going to go over here to my drawing tools to space these out and align them properly. On my Format tab under Drawing Tools, I can go to Alignment and align their center points. And I can go to Alignment and distribute them vertically, making them evenly spaced across that area. Now the next part is where we set up how the radio buttons are supposed to work. If we right click on any of these radio buttons and we choose to format the control, you'll see that in the tab for the control that by default it's unchecked and that it can be linked to a specific cell. So I'll go ahead and link this. It doesn't really matter what cell it is, but I'm going to be hiding this in the near future. So take a second and think about what cell could be hidden for you. Uh, maybe this one right here. And then click OK. And then I'll just make sure that I right click on them, go to Format Control, and as you can see, it's all linked to cell C13. So all five of these radio buttons are linked to one another and they're all linked to the value in cell C13. I'll click OK here. Now what's interesting is click on the first radio button and all of a sudden cell C13 says 1. Click on the fourth one, it says 4. Click on the second one, it says 2, etc. I haven't found any way to manually change what these values are, so you just need to keep track of which radio button is the first one, which radio button is the second one, etc. Now that you have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 being output by the radio buttons, I can create a column of information here that de determines uh, what needs to be highlighted. So I'll go over here and make a column for the word highlight. And uh, what we'll do is we'll use the rows button. The rows button, what it does is it says, okay, tell me how many rows I have and I'll output that number. So if I say how many rows are there from region one to region one, you say there's one row. When I say how many rows are there from region one to region two, you say two. How many rows are there from region one to region three? There are three. And so you can see how the rows formula is going to work with this value that's being output here. If it's a one, we want the first region. If it's a two, we want the second region. If it's a three, we want the third region. So the highlight is equal sign if, if the value in cell C13, and let's lock that down with the F4 keyboard shortcut, is equal to the number of rows, so the rows function, open parentheses, between dollar sign D, dollar sign four, colon D4. So what does that actually do? It says, okay, the first part of this, the dollar sign D, dollar sign four, is an absolute reference to cell D4. But the second part, just D4, that is a relative reference, so that will change as we stretch this down. So the number of rows from D4 to D4 in cell E4 right there will be one. And when I autofill this down, it'll say how many rows are there from D4 to D5? It'll be two. How many rows are there from D4 to D6? There'll be three, yada, yada, yada. Okay, then a comma, and we just output the value itself, and then a comma and a zero. So if the number value in cell C13 is equal to the number of rows to this point in the table, then output that number value, and if not, output a zero. Let's see if that works. I'll autofill that down, and as you can see, the first entry is that 14,500, and you'll just want to ignore the errors on these. These are um, adjacent cell errors, and it's because the rows function is not using the entire table the whole time, so I'll just ignore the function on those. Okay, and we can take a second and format that appropriately if we want. Now, if I click on a region two, region two has the number value and the others do not. When I click on region three, Region 3 has the number value and the others do not. Region 4, Region 5. Okay, so that seems to work appropriately. Now let's highlight this entire column here, the highlight column. Copy it, go over to the table, and use Control v to paste it. Now as you can see, we have two bars 
for region one and one bar for all the rest of them. Now let's do a little formatting so that this works appropriately. I'll click on the original bars that are here. Go to the fill options on the right hand side and uh, let's go with sort of a, a medium or a pale gray color. And then let's click on the blue bar that's here. And you can make it blue, you can make it you know, black, whatever you feel like doing here. I'll go black with mine. And we want to go over here to the uh, series options, the thing that looks like a chart on the right hand side. And we want to overlap this 100%. And let's make the gap width something like 25%. So they're nice fat bars. Now, as we see, region two, region three, region four, and region five. Not bad. The last part of this, oh actually let's take the the frame around this off. So I'll click on the outside part of the chart, no fill on the border, no line. Okay, and maybe even take these lines out. I like a clean chart. Okay, looking good. Next part of the process. I need a label that says 13.5K to go into this bar, but none of the other bars. So to do that, I'm going to make a column here called Label. Format paint from the previous so that it looks good. Equal sign if. Okay, well, if this value is a zero, I don't really care about it. But if it's greater than zero, then comma, let's output 13.5K with a dollar sign in front of it. The easiest way to do that is to use the text function. So I'll go in here and use the TEXT function, input the value, comma, quotation marks, and now the formatting that I would like the label to use is dollar sign, 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.0, comma, close quotes, close parentheses, ampersand, the letter K. So take the number value and output it as there's no value in the ones position. There's no value in the tens position. There's no value in the hundreds position. Go to the thousands position and show the thousands as a 0.0, .0 formatting, meaning show at least the thousands position and go back to the hundreds position and show it as a decimal value. Now, if E4 is not greater than zero, on the other hand, comma, two quotation marks, output literally nothing. And I autofill that down. And as you can see, the label does exactly what I want it to do. I click on region two, I click on region four, and that highlight goes along with it. Very nice. So to make this label work, what we do is we click onto the black bars that are here. We go to the format tab at the top of the screen, excuse me, not the format tab, the design tab. I always mess, mess that up. Go to the design tab at the top of the screen, click on add chart element and add some data labels. The problem, of course, let's go to centered data labels. The problem is that your centered data labels include everything that's in the highlight column, not everything that's in the label column. So let's fix that. I click onto the data labels. And over here on the right hand side, I go to my chart, uh, excuse me, label options, my little chart icon, and I say your value of the label should not be the value from the highlight column, it should be the value from some other cells. So I click the checkbox on value from cells, and I highlight the entirety of the label column here and click OK. Now that's too much, I need to uncheck the checkboxes for the values and other things like that. Okay. I can stretch this chart out a little bit, but the label that's in there is not formatted appropriately. So I'll click back onto the data label and let's just change its font formatting a little bit. There we go. Excellent. And again, click, 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 click. It highlights and it puts the label in there. Now the last thing to do is to clean this whole thing up. So the first part of that is uh, I'm going to hide the values column, the highlight column, the label column. I'm going to hide the two that's down here at the bottom. I'm going to hide all of that. But when I do, the default nature of Excel is to hide the chart that's related to it. So I'll go up here to my design tab at the top of the screen, click on to select data, 
And when I click on the select data, there's an option in here for hidden and empty cells. So I'm about to hide these cells. I go to hidden and empty cells and I say, when I do hide them, show the data that's in the hidden cells because all I'm doing by hiding it is just cleaning up the visual. So I click on show data in hidden rows and columns, click OK and click OK. And now I'm free to highlight the D, E and F columns here, right click and hide them. To go to the row 13, right click and hide that. To move the chart in the place beside the different regions that are here. Let me just stretch it just a touch down. And let's go ahead and put a title up there at the top. So I'll do the format painter here, slide across that range. Maybe center it across selection and I'll put in the word values. There it is. So now I have a full visual. I can click on any of the regions using the radio buttons on the side and I can decide to show and highlight any of the values that's relevant to.